We're continuing our message today about God's goodness is why. Uh, in the second part, we just learned that God's goodness is why God created the earth. In our third part, we're going to be looking at God's goodness is why Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus said in John 14, 6, a familiar verse, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, we're familiar with that scripture. We're familiar also with a famous verse in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. But why is God's goodness the reason why Jesus Christ is the only way? Well, you know, if we had other ways of salvation, you know, that would uh, directly link us to God's goodness. What if we all could just do enough good deeds and earn our way to heaven? You know, uh, would that depend on God's goodness? Well, maybe it might. But you know, what if we went ahead and said, you know, I'm going to go ahead and every day I'm going to give $5 to somebody in need out there. You know, and if I gave, five, if I gave at least 1,000 people in my lifetime $5, and it's only 5,000 bucks, you know, $5,000, I'll earn my way to heaven. Could we say that that is God's goodness? Well, maybe in a way if God provided the $5 for you, but in the most part, it wouldn't be God's goodness because most of you could probably, you know, earn at least $5 a day, if not $5 a week, and over a lifespan, give a thousand people five bucks and be able to earn your way into heaven. In the same way, you say, well, what if I just go ahead and go to church? I'll go ahead and go to church, and I'll go to church every single Sunday as best as I can, except in possibly if I was sick or some you know, excuse that it was legitimate. And if I went to church every single Sunday from, let's say, age you know, 18, because sometimes you don't have control when you're younger, uh, and all the way up to age 50, if you go to church every single Sunday, then you earn your, your way to heaven. Would that be God's goodness? Well, possibly, because you say, well, you know, I, I had to be healthy enough and be able to get out there to church and go to church. But guess what? In the end, who would get the credit for that? Would God get the credit? Well, only partially, but mostly you would get the credit. So I earned my way to heaven. But the Bible says, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. And another place it tells us that all our righteousness are as filthy rags. Because even when we try to do good, guess what? A little pride gets in the way. We begin to brag in our minds, in our hearts. So look what I've done. I, I did this nice thing. You know, I'm going to get... I, I'm gonna get uh, uh, maybe a reward. I'm gonna, people are gonna look at me and say, "What a nice person that person uh, that that uh, person is for helping that other person." So, even in our best state, we are depraved. Sin has made even our good deeds sinful in the sight of God because our pride and our selfish ways get, uh, get in front of us. And so, Jesus Christ is the only way. God's goodness is why Jesus Christ is the only. Way. So, you have to realize that. If you're going to serve God today, if you're going to be a success for Him, you have to realize that without Him, you can do nothing. Without Him, you can do nothing. That Jesus Christ is the only way for your success. Jesus Christ is the only way for you to be able to, to have blessings on this earth. Well, I'm a pretty good worker at, at my job, you know, and they, they just gave me a raise last week on my salary. Well, guess what? That was God's goodness. But you know, God could take that right away from you in just a moment. You know, you don't know if you walk out there, you get hit, hit by a truck and be dead. Or you might end up getting some disease. We have the COVID floating everywhere. You can get, you know, well, I have the COVID vaccine. That doesn't mean, it's only 75% effective. You know, those of you out there in the video audience, you might have got that vaccine, but guess what? Did you know that that's only 75% effective? Well, they say, you know, it's a very small chance, but that small chance is just big enough that if God wanted to take your life right now, he could have you get that disease, you'd be dead next week. You know, you, you have no promise of tomorrow. The Bible says that, that all our promises is that, that, that it's appointed a man once to die and after that, the judgment. So you do have a promise that one day we're going to die. That's a promise, guaranteed. But after that is going to be judgment. We're going to be standing before God giving an account of what we did for him. So Jesus Christ is the only way. And you have to realize that the more you think about that and realize that, the more you're going to have faith in God's goodness. But if you start thinking of other ways of, of how to, you know, get to heaven, other ways of how to, to be successful in life, other ways of how to, to make ends meet, other ways of how to, to cure yourself of, of those 
uh, uh, diseases or, or bad health, uh, other ways of, of what you're trying to work out in your life, you're not going to make it because you're, going, you're looking at your, yourself, you're looking at other people, you're not looking at Jesus Christ. Uh, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 12, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, he's the one that this whole world is all about. He's the one that God's goodness is here because of Jesus Christ. You have to realize that Jesus Christ is the one that needs to be number one in your life. That's why it tells us in Matthew 6, 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. It didn't say second or third. It says seek ye first. And it also it says the great commandment we learned last week is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy body, with all thy soul. It didn't say love the Lord with only part of yourself. Uh, and then it said the second commandment is like unto it, to love thy neighbor as thyself. That's another problem we have. The uh, reason why we're not helping our neighbors like we should is we're too much in love with ourself. Ourself is number one. We're looking at our goodness and how good we are. Oh, I'm a good person. I need to treat myself and go out to eat. Or I need to go out and get myself an ice cream cone because I did a good job today. You know, why don't you go out and do a good deed for somebody else? Why don't you go ahead and think about, well, what can I do to help my church or help somebody else in need? That's the reason why we are so selfish because we're not thinking that Jesus Christ is the only way. He needs to be number one in your heart and life. You know, there's a little acronym called JOY. JOY stands for Jesus first, others next, yourself last. Many of you have it the other way around. Instead of joy, you have it as yodge. I'm not sure what language that is, but you have your life mixed up. Your life is going backwards, and when it goes backwards, you can't even understand what it is saying. You know, who ever heard of a yodge? You know, joy is what we all want in life. We want to be able to enjoy life and be able to, uh, you know, see God's goodness around about us. But if you're going to have true joy today, you have to realize that God's goodness is in three, three fashions. Number one. Uh, God's goodness is why we serve God. God's goodness is, uh, is why he created the earth. And God's goodness is why Jesus Christ is the only way. So today you have to, you have to turn your, your eyes and your faith upon God's goodness and not your goodness. Not, not somebody else, but on Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Because the Bible tells us that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. One day your knee will bow. One day your tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. And that he is the only way. That he's the only one that can do anything for you and for me. And therefore, if you decide to do that now, if you go ahead and say, you know, I'm going to do that now. You will have to do it later on. You're going to be able to do it now and have God's goodness and blessings upon you. And so I'm going to end this message today with two... Uh, questions I'm going to ask you. So I'm going to ask everyone to bow your heads and close your eyes right now. I have two questions I'm going to give you. The first question is to maybe those of you out there that are unsaved. Maybe you're here in our uh, audience today that's, that you're not saved. Are you refusing to be saved because you don't believe in the goodness of God? Maybe you, you haven't become a Christian yet because you don't have faith in God's goodness. Maybe you're believing in evolution. Maybe you're believing in something else. But guess what? Jesus Christ is the only way. There's no other way. And today, you need to be able to turn to him and realize that, that if you uh, confess your, uh, your faith in him, repent from your sins, and ask him to come in your heart and life, he promised that he will save you. If any man you know, uh, uh, hear his voice, he's at the door knocking, and open your door and let him in. He said, I will come into you. He will come in and save you. So if you're out there today, and you're refusing to be saved because you don't believe in God's goodness, Begin believing in God's goodness right now and pray this prayer with me. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer if you'd like to trust him to be saved. So say with me in a prayer. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I repent from my sins. Please forgive me and come into my heart and life and save my soul. I receive you right now as my Lord and Savior. Amen. So if you pray that prayer right now, God promised that you're, you just became saved. You became born again, a new believer in Christ. And God's goodness has now wrapped itself around you, and now you're headed to a life of goodness. That means you're always going to be uh, uh, without trials, without persecution, because now you just declare war against the world, flesh, and the devil. But God said he'll deliver you and help you. With your head bowed and your eyes closed, now I'm going to speak to the, those of you that are out there that are, are Christians. Maybe you've stopped serving God because you're discouraged and have lost your faith in God's goodness, in the goodness of God. 
And maybe today at this service, or if you're watching on the video, you need to pray and ask God to rededicate your life and, and renew your, your faith in God's goodness to your life. So I'm going to ask uh, during this prayer that you might pray that prayer and ask God to help you to renew your faith in his goodness and that you'll rededicate your life to serve him better like you should. Lord, we thank you now for the message. I do pray for all these that are out here today, those that uh, uh, have, are lost, that don't know you, that have not believed in your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for maybe a few out there that have prayed that prayer and just received you today. We ask your blessings upon them. But Lord, many Christians here today that have gotten discouraged and lost their faith in your goodness, and maybe you're looking at themselves or other things or other people, I pray today, Lord, that they might look at you and, and put their eyes upon you. And Lord, that you might renew that faith and renew their dedication in their life to serve you better. We ask your blessing now upon this message that you might use the word as it's gone forth, that we all might see your goodness day to day. And as we head toward the springtime, Lord, we will enjoy the beautiful spring ahead of us. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. God bless you. Thank you so much.